Bitcoin doesn't care about nationality, gender, ethnicity, age, sexual preferences, or any other imagined victimization or privilege. To Bitcoin, we're all equal. It is a voluntary system and it knows no biases. Bitcoin is equality of opportunity in its purest form, and it doesn't have any opinion on outcome whatsoever. Bitcoin, sovereignty through mathematics. That's a quote. So Bitcoin is freedom. Here's why. Governments can't control it. They can't stop it. And if they can't, you and I sure can't. Nobody can. It is a decentralized hydra that gets stronger each time it's attacked. So the mythical creature of the hydra had many heads. Let's say it had three to five heads. You cut off one head, to grow back. So it actually gets stronger the more you attack it. It's a perfect metaphor for being anti-fragile. Anti-fragile is something that when attacked, when stressed, it learns, adapts, and gets stronger against that stress. Humans, if they operate their life the right way, they exercise and they stress their body and they fast and they do these different things, can be anti-fragile organisms. We grow, we adapt, we learn, we get stronger. Bitcoin doesn't give a shit about your politics or if you think things should be this way or that. You can't bully it, Censor it, control it, manipulate it, persuade it. The only thing you can do is join it and help it or get the fuck out of the way. It is a living organism that does one thing and does it better than anything else in history, scarcity. And then I put money in parentheses. Bitcoin is a spontaneous big bang of life that came into existence right as humanity needed it. Just like fire, the wheel, penicillin, the steam engine, steel, and many other of the great discoveries that humanity has uncovered by tinkering with nature. And if I hadn't found Bitcoin personally, or I should say if Bitcoin hadn't found me, I'd have a much bleaker look on the future of America and humanity. Bitcoin is hope, as Michael Saylor says. When you do the necessary work to understand what I'm talking about here, because it sounds like a lot of high flutin pie in the sky nonsense, like how could this computer code actually be this thing? But that's what's so amazing about it, because when you go deep into it, it forces you to start thinking from first principles, to understand you know, economics, Austrian, to understand the difference between Keynesian and Austrian economics, to understand the history of money, to understand government, history in general, why collectivism is such a bad idea, things like that. It forces you to become a student of reality, of fact, because it's hard math, it's computer code, it's speech, and it doesn't give a shit about you or me, which is exactly why humanity needs it, because humanity has had a problem. When we get together, some people get power, some don't. Some are outspoken and sound persuasive and their ideas flourish and some others adopt that and, and latch on or whatever. And it always ends up being the same thing. The few dictate how the many live. And the few always have incentives that are not the same as the many. The few want to stay in power. They want control and they want as much of it and more of it as possible because that's what solidifies their place. And the masses, well, they kind of just have to accept it. And then eventually it's so bad, there's revolution. And this is why you have the oscillation of civilizations and the collapsing of governments and civilizations over time, Rome. I mean, every major empire in the history of the world has collapsed. There's no reason to think America won't go the same way. In fact, if you look at the data and what's going on in 2020, it looks like we're, get, we're going towards that end at an accelerated rate. And it almost seems like those in power want to get there faster. Again, they're just being pulled along in a tide of bad incentives, backward policies, and the destructiveness that is democracy and socialism and all these really bad ideas that is basically a world mandated through violence. That's what government is. Government is monopoly through violence. And when you dig into Bitcoin and you see how it is anti-fragile and how no government can control it or censor it, how it is a uncensorable, unmanipulatable, unpersuadable thing, organism, living, I would even say living at this point, and no government can mess with it, you realize that it's the perfect equalizer. It's the best way to bring sovereignty and freedom to all 7 billion humans because no government can ever do that. Every government, if it's man-made, is going to be beholden to human psychology, which is my ideas are the best way, your ideas are not, I tell you how to live, and you have to just accept it. And that's what democracy ends up being, mob rule. 51% of the vote means that this group of people tell the 49% how they should live and how they should think and whatever. Bitcoin is a great equalizer. That's why I don't think of it as even an invention. I think of it as a discovery. Bitcoin is a discovery. Just like when we discovered fire. It was, it's a natural elemental force that was available in nature. We just had to get the information to put the pieces together. And one good analogy to explain this is oil. If you had land back in the day and you found oil on your land, it was bad. It was potentially devastating because you couldn't grow crops. And this oil was a waste product. They used to have to pay people to cart it away. Once we had the technological understanding and technology to actually use the oil, finding oil was the best thing ever because then it gave you a bunch of wealth and then you could buy all the food you needed.
before we had the understanding of what oil was, it was just a waste product. I believe even gasoline was a waste product. Gasoline was a waste product that was a byproduct of kerosene making. I believe that's what it was. Don't quote me on that. I believe we made kerosene, which we use in lamps, and it was the major source of lighting at that time period in history. And that's how Rockefeller uh, really rose to prominence as he became one of the largest providers of kerosene, obviously through oil. And then gasoline was a byproduct of that that I think they had to like throw away. Eventually, they figured out, well, wow, this is the perfect thing for the combustible engine. So it took innovation, technology, and knowledge of how to put certain raw materials together that are available in nature. So again, this is all just nature. It's us rubbing sticks together until we find something that works. Rubbing sticks together until we figure out that we can create fire through friction and heat. We had to come together to bring metals and designs and put them together in a way where there was pressure and valves and this and that. Put it together in a way where we can then use gasoline and it could be one of the most amazing fuel sources for humanity. And then obviously we see the result of that. So Bitcoin is kind of like, to most people, it's like early kerosene. It almost looks like it's, it's a toy or just some fringe thing uh, because masses haven't adopted it. They don't know what it's gonna be good for. They don't know how it can do all these things. They don't know how I can say all these things on, on the screen right now that I just said and actually believe it wholeheartedly with my full being. It sounds like a bunch of malarkey, to be honest, and hype. But Bitcoin for me is not about price. Price is actually probably the least interesting thing about Bitcoin. It's about hope, it's about the future, and it's about us coming to this discovery akin to discovering the wheel of fire and coming into it early before 7 billion humans figure it out. Because when 7 billion humans figure it out, what happens to the price? Parabolic. And you get hyper Bitcoinization, as they call it, which is basically the masses adopting Bitcoin. Supply and demand happens. There's gonna be way fewer Bitcoins than there are people that want it. And the price goes like that. That's what happens. The best thing you can do to protect your financial future and your sovereignty against inflation happens to be Bitcoin. Also, the best thing that you can do to potentially have the most asymmetric risk to reward ratio of any place to park your money that there is in existence today is also Bitcoin. And then when you understand first principles and you look at governments and you look at how Bitcoin is basically a violent list revolution, it's a peaceful revolution taking place that is going to remove a lot of power from governments and the elite because it's going to disincentivize them to use violence through coercion. Like, for example, gold was easy because you can steal from somebody. So central banks started hoarding it. You can even outlaw citizens from having it, which Roosevelt did. Bitcoin, you can't do any of that. And governments will try. They will attack it. They will attack it. And they will slowly over time learn. It's kind of like prohibition. You can put all the laws you want on banning alcohol. People are going to find a way. And all it ends up being is a big waste of time and money. So you may as well get on board, tax it, embrace it, and then be one of the beneficiaries of being a pro-Bitcoin country. And when that sets in, when governments realize that, and then governments start buying it, and central banks start buying it, because the game theory sets in, early Bitcoin adopters are going to benefit tremendously. But what's gonna be great about this is you can have all the Bitcoin in the world, you can have as much as you want, and you can't change the rules, and you can't use it to control other people. So if someone else has their $50 in Bitcoin, and they're using that to live, and I got my 50 billion in Bitcoin, I cannot steal from that person. I cannot do anything to manipulate their money away or anything like that. Now, some would say that there are certain things you can do with pricing and manipulate the market if you have a lot of it. And like, yeah, to an extent that is true, but we've already hit peak decentralization that more and more every single bear and bull market cycle we have, the price manipulation is gonna become less profitable and less able. And if you're someone that just buys and holds, it doesn't affect you anyways, okay? So that's the topic for another day. What you should do is buy Bitcoin, colin.coach slash swan. And then you should do the research to figure out why I am so into this, why I usually talk about nutrition. And this has kind of led me into a whole new world of economics and history and all these different things. It makes you a better person. It makes you a better thinker. It makes you think for yourself. Bitcoin is probably the most education inducing thing that I've ever seen in my lifetime. And it also is the perfect equalizer of bad ideas, of collectivism of convincing yourself you're this or that or whatever. All the fragilities that a fiat system produces and the intellectuals that come out of it and the politicians that benefit from it is just washed away by the true, pure mathematical certainty that is Bitcoin. And that's why it already is changing the world and going to change it even more so. Get in the Better Human newsletter, call in.coach, get all the updates and the weekly email that I send out every weekend. And I'll see you in the next one.